It's Monday, November 27th, and it's time to begin class. Yay! I figure for the people at home, it makes things a bit more enjoyable for them. Those yeah. poor dead children. Yay! Another kid's alive. Um, first and last name on it? Yes, Mr. Brogy. Yeah, good job, Miles. Uh, put it over there on top of that other one. Thank you, Mr. Broviak. You're welcome, Miles. We always got a chance to bump. And now you get a chance to do the bell work with the agrees and disagrees and why you feel that way. Thank you, Mr. Broviak. You're welcome, Miles. We always got a chance to bomb like that. Feel closer already. Then back to the rest of you from there. Let's see if we go through it. Those of you at home, I forgot about Jeff's bonding with people. Um, let's see you. The tie game, I am going to be wearing Christmas ties all the way up until Christmas. Well, or at least winter ties. You can't guess Christmas or winter. It'd be much more specific than that. And then the book report is due in two weeks and two days. That's two um, hopefully you have finished reading your book, so then you have the project to work on, and you can try to get that done really quickly. And our bell work for today, here is what you're going to have to do. Uh, you're going to go through, and for each one of these, tell me why you agree or disagree. You're going to do a little blurby, explainy bits, and go through and talk about why. So don't just write agree or disagree. Make sure you explain to me why you agree or disagree. Um, if you're watching the home version, now you can hit the pause, but you and then you can just go ahead and write down, read it, or, and then, or you can wait until I read them out loud to you, just like my melodic voice. Uh, and then we're going to have a conversation, and you can listen to our conversation, and then you can even talk to us, and we'll pretend we hear you. What's that you say? Oh, good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Did he really hear me? Yeah, I totally heard you get up. All right. Let's see which ones you agree or disagree with. The first one. I have enjoyed getting revenge on someone in the past. Are any of you agree... And disagree. Two. Any kid that gets detention with the principal is a bad kid. Agree? Disagree. Uh, interesting. Um, then those of you who say disagree, part of what you're going to have to tell me in a moment, not yet, but what is it that makes someone a bad kid? Because that's going to be part of what we're going to get into, is figuring out what makes someone a bad person. Three. I would intervene if I saw my bully getting beat up. I would do something to stop it or tell a teacher or something. Agree, raise your hand. Disagree, raise your hand. Wow. About split on that one. <laughs> Four. Loudly <laughs> announcing to the whole class that someone has ugly clothes is an example of bullying. Agree? Disagree. Oh. Oh. All right. So if I change it by adding in the word repeatedly, I put in oh. repeatedly oh. announcing the whole class that someone has ugly clothes. Sure. I mean, you guys say now agree? Is it the same someone? Disagree. All right. Oh. And five. I would report my best friend for doing something majorly bad, cheating on a test, bringing a knife to school, no matter the consequences. Agree? You know. Disagree. <laughs> No, all right. um, these are all things that are going to pop up in our book with uh, the Shadow Club. Essentially, to give you a, before we talk about a quick outline of what's going to happen, it deals with a group of kids at school who keep getting bullied uh, and harassed by the popular, the, the, the number ones in the school. And so they feel like they're shadows because they're not the best kids. So they're sort of like living in those kids' shadows. And the main popular kids keep making their lives horrible. So they decide to create a club based on revenge, where the idea is we're going to go out and get revenge on these people to make ourselves feel better. And it starts off where you don't get revenge on the person that's attacking you. So let's say Sean and I are both in the club together. Well, Sean doesn't want to get caught getting revenge, so I say, hey, Sean, who's been bothering you the whole time? He says, what's well, this Kevin kid? I'm like, done. So then we wait till Sean can be easily seen in the cafeteria, and then I get revenge on Kevin by doing something, and that way Sean doesn't get in trouble. And then when I come back and say, well, bowling has been harassing me, then we wait until I'm out in the open somewhere, and then Sean goes and does something against bowling, and then that way no one gets caught. Mr. Bowling, that's genius. It was genius until the, it's all fun and games, until someone puts out not. Um, and then people start getting hurt because people start getting competitive. And I go, hey, you did a pretty good revenge when you went against Kevin. I'm going to do an even better one when I get to go against bowling. 
And I was like, ooh, that was pretty good. And then all of a sudden it becomes Nick's turn. And Nick's like, mine's even better. And then Nick raises up the next one, and then people keep trying to make it better and better. And then you know, people die. Like that. And so that's where the game goes into. So that's the shadow. I'll bake him like a cake. It's all based on the idea of revenge. Um, but I'm going to jump down to question number two first. I have a feeling that's the, the bigger one I want to get to. So for those of you who don't say getting sent to the principal is makes you a bad kid, then what does make you a bad kid? Because our main character is going to keep telling us that he's a good person and keeps on making bad choices. So at what point do your bad choices make you a bad kid? Cahill? The... Where you're, like, hurting someone or stealing. So as long as you're only affecting you, no matter what you do, doesn't make you bad. But affecting other people is what makes you bad. Yeah. All right. Miles. Okay, so, like, you're not a bad kid if you, like, steal, like, porn farm. Mm -hmm. You're a bad kid in a movie, make a mistake. Like, but bad kids do, like, serious things, like beat up others or, you know, stab people. <laughs> um, so, we don't really have anyone at our school that beats anybody else up or stabs anybody. So by your definition, we have no bad kids at Fisher Junior High. Well, I mean, like, you're not a bad kid. You just did, like, a few bad things. That doesn't make you... But at what that point... That you like, well, and steps. the reason I, I don't mean to uh, go after Miles, but he brings up a very common idea. is like, well, there's no bad kids. There's just bad choices. Well, at what point do your bad choices make you a bad person? Person. When you're like, like and you do the same thing and when you're keep the same thing. people. So you're saying so you're saying because of age you can't be bad. It's not until you reach a certain age that you are you don't know any better when you're five and you like stab somebody for the first time. Wait, five You thought that was a passing a bad but what's so, by your definition again, we have no bad kids at Fisher Junior High. Well, if you didn't stab somebody before, why do we have to put some like stab? Who wants to stab? Yeah, stab. Right. I have a better one. Okay, people stop talking. I have the better one. You're not my mom. What? Okay, so, um, let's say, like, if you just did it one time, you're not a bad kid, you keep going and going and going and keep doing it. Can be right. I can do it. <laughs> Abby? Um, you're not, you're only a bad kid or if you break out of prison and... Well, once again... You can't be incarcerated. That's a crime. Or if you kill someone. So once again, by your definition, we have no bad kids at Fisher Junior High. That's a crime. So what is that? That's not a crime. That's not a crime. Nine points, what's up? Oh, um, so like, I wouldn't say like, a, uh, um, I'm, I'm going with Miles, if like, they're like really young, and they're like three, and they're like, sh like, sh shake Once again, somebody. we're going with just junior high. Yeah, oh, okay, so like, with like junior high, if they go to the principal office like once, and that's okay, like, one time, but if you go to it like, a lot, like 15 maybe, or something like that, then like. So what about two, three, and four? Well, Still like, okay? Yeah, no, I mean, kind of, but not really. Interesting. Alright. Cassins. Well, they could have been sent to detention if they were They could have been framed for someone else's nope. crime. Not doing framed. Dang yeah. it happened. Yeah, I'm not doing loopholes. I'm doing you got there, you got in detention. You earned it yourself. I have nothing. Okay. I have <laughs> bully somebody here back here. Jacob. Okay, I disagree with everyone except Ryland. Oh, I think yeah. that <laughs> It only makes you a bad kid is unless you're like repeatedly making someone feel bad, even if it's like yourself or someone else or your teacher or your mom or your dad. And they're like regretting about having you. Oh, <laughs> whoa! What? But like, if you're making someone feel bad on a daily basis or even like on a weekly basis, well, no, 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 on a daily basis, then that makes you act a trouble. Interesting. My uh, Joaquin, before I move on. Okay. Um, I I don't think so because so uh, I've been sent to the principal a few times and yeah. some of it was for being a bad kid. Bad choices. Yeah, and some of it's dumb reasons. Like I wouldn't give a kid a pencil or something. And, uh, really? 
Part of it is also people change. I have a lot of kids who come into seventh grade, and I have eighth graders where other kids ask me, do you have this kid in class? I'm like, yeah, they're like, how bad is he? I'm like, he's fine. He's a great kid. I'm like, what? He got in trouble all the time in sixth grade. People change all the time from one year to the next. I have kids who spend the entire year in my slow kid section for seventh grade, and then go to eighth grade, and they get all A's because they change. So part of it is just because you're a bad kid at one point, and that's another big part of it too is, if you are a bad kid, are you a bad kid forever? No. Or can there be change to it? And I mean, I firm believer of the fact that we can change. That's why I don't give up on you, why I keep pushing the fact that I don't want you to be in my slow kid section forever. I don't want you to have zero B points forever, because I have faith in you eventually making that change. All right, so then the idea of three, I would intervene if I saw my bully getting beat up. A big part of the book is what do you do when you see bad things happening to the person you don't like? And it becomes that tough moral quandary. Now some of you, you have little hearts of unicorns, and your thought is, Mr. Provia, there's no one I don't like. I love it. Well then that probably doesn't apply to you as much. But there's others and you're like, oh yeah, that kid? <laughs> yeah. And so if you had that dream come true and you saw the bad thing happening to them, would you do something? And you did do my bell work, right? Just making sure. Since your notebook was out and you were working on it, just making sure we we're good to go. All right. So thoughts on the, the third one then. Would you intervene or why or why not? Like, walk in. Um, I would after them getting beat up a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you'd watch it for a little bit and then do something? Yeah, like, so after like two of you die or something, I'd be like, okay, that's enough, go away. So, so, so losing in, in between you would do something, but you'd first enjoy it? Yeah. Let them get hurt. What's the safe for the moment for <laughs> Take a video. Yeah. Post it on Wellesley. Right, I know. That's how we keep going down to eight points. Oh. Rylan. Um, would you get in trouble to join in or no? I would imagine. I mean, it depends if you get caught, just like anything else. Uh, so, if I didn't get caught, I'm going to take it outside. So, alright. Okay, take it outside. Miles? Yeah, okay, take it outside. So, this is what I would think would happen. Uh -huh. If, like, a bully was being beat up, right? Uh -huh. Like, you need. I would, I would, like, agree with Walt King. Like, you need to, like, savor the moment. That was Kevin. No, it was you, and I remember it fondly. Oh, here you go. Where is it? Anyway, you would need to, like, sit there and, like, you know, think about all the bad moments you've had with this person. <laughs> like, if it was, like, something really bad, like, they threw food at you, then you need to, like, stay there. But if it was, like, you know, they pinched you that one time, you'd stay there for, like, 20 seconds. So you would intervene, but only after letting it in. They felt the pain that I felt. Yeah. Abby. Um, I, um, I, um, I would just go back home, get this pop, out to popcorn to watch. It would be like watching a movie of people looking beat up. So you would enjoy watching them be put in pain. Yep, with a good bag of popcorn. And granted, <laughs> you would what? <laughs> so not tell anyone, just see it happen, and then just turn around and. Interesting. This is where you get that definition of where your morals are and what kind of person you could be, because I think it's one of those toughest choices when you see bad things happening to someone you don't like, but still knowing that they're a human and getting involved is not easy. I'd like to say that I would do something, but at times it's not always the easy choice to make. Number four, for those of you who said that <clears throat> doesn't qualify as bullying, was it just because it was not repeatedly? Yeah. Yeah. But the idea of once it becomes a repeatedly kind of thing, even yeah. though you're not actually physically hurting them or anything like that, and that becomes part of it with the book, is the idea of what qualifies as bullying. And different people have different ideas of when they're getting bullied. And in the book, it's the idea that not necessarily what you think makes someone a bully is what someone else considers themselves a bully. All right, the last one we had a bit more disagreement on. 
I would report my best friend for doing something majorly bad, no matter the consequences. And yeah, this is where you have that snitch issue. But at the same time, that's how, I mean, to take it to the extreme circumstances, when you have stuff like a school shooting, it's oh. because someone has to step up and say something. Mr. Broviak, you said cheating on a test. I agree. But part of it is just that mentality. The idea that if you see wrong, does it matter who it is? And I don't think there's a right or wrong on this one. I think it is part of that, where do your morals lie? And which one do you rank higher, your friends, or with what you see bad things happening? In the book, one of the characters finds out when their friends did something really, really bad. And they have to make that moral choice. Do you abandon your friend because you know they did something awful? Like the idea of getting an innocent frame for cheating on a test, getting kicked out of school when it was your friend that did it, and you find out your friend did that, do you step up or go, nope, that innocent kid who did nothing sucks to be them. And so that's, you have the knowledge of this. Grant? It depends how bad it is. If it's just cheating on a test, I'm not, I wouldn't say anything. But, I mean, if they, like, pulled a knife on someone, yeah. Are, well, so where do you draw the line? Maybe that helps. Hurting others. Hurting someone, like, really bad. But it could hurt them. All right. Their oh. feelings. Nick Hill? Uh, if someone had a knife and, like, iron knuckles and they were threatening people, then I would iron tell. <laughs> so what if they weren't threatening, they just had them? You knew they had or they hadn't done the threatening yet? Then you know not the Interesting. Oh. Tomorrow we'll actually begin reading the words and finding out what happens in the story.